Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to another video from Let's DevOps. Today's video is going to be uh, special because uh, all these uh, days, months, we have been looking into different topics, smaller pieces of various DevOps, DevSecOps uh, tools, processes. But today it's going to be a culmination of all of it. How should a DevSecOps CI CD pipeline look like? Uh, CI CD is a huge topic because, as you know, CI is continuous integration and CD is continuous delivery. So, explaining a complete CI CD pipeline in one video could be too long. So, today let's break it down as a first part and look up into how a DevSecOps CI pipeline should look like. Uh, when you claim that you have incorporated, implemented a DevSecOps CI pipeline into your project, what are the key stages? key tools that is required to be integrated and set up as a pipeline is what we are going to look into today's video. Without wasting much time, let's get started. Uh, uh, so for now, I have Jenkins, I have GitHub, and I have Docker Hub. So Jenkins will be my CI CD pipeline tool, GitHub will, my, will be my version control tool, and Docker Hub will be my registry, uh, container registry tool. Uh, so Again, today's video is not going to talk in detail about each of the stage as in how I have configured, what are the tools that is required, how do you uh, configure and integrate them into the pipeline. Uh, no, we are not going to do that. Again, considering uh, the fact that it would take too long, uh, we are only going to focus on what uh, and where each of the stage should be placed and what are the minimum stages that uh, will then let you claim that you have incorporated a DevSecOps CI pipeline is what we are going to look into today's video. But be assured, we are going to touch upon each of the stage and see how each of the things are configured uh, in the coming videos. So as I said, uh, I have Jenkins as my CI CD tool, pipeline tool, and uh, there is this uh, project, Node.js Ecom application CI pipeline. Uh, this is configured as a multi-branch uh, pipeline job. So um, if there are uh, more than one branches, you will get all of those branches listed in here, but I just have main to keep it simple. And all of my code um, for this application and the pipeline related code is sitting in GitHub under the project Node.js e-commerce application repository. And here you can find all of my um, uh, source code applications as well as DevOps, DevSecOps related configurations like the Sonar properties, Jenkins CI, Docker file, and much more. Uh, right, now let's get into my Jenkins CI file, uh, Jenkins file. And you know that uh, the pipeline infrastructure as a code is written into this Jenkins file. I'm not going to run through this huge Jenkins file because it's pretty large because of the various number of stages that is configured. But I would just like to touch upon a couple of key points. So this pipeline is getting executed on a local agent that is um, installed on my Ubuntu environment. on my Ubuntu environment, which is my local uh, environment. I've set up this environment on my Windows machine. So I have a Jenkins agent running on this uh, uh, environment. And this pipeline is going to get executed on this local machine. Why? Uh, because if I use the default node of Jenkins, then all of the tools that I need for my pipeline is, would, wouldn't be there. Like I need uh, Anchor CLI utility or an OWASP scanner or Docker or any, any other utility that is required will not be available on the default uh, node. And hence I have configured um, an agent to be running on this machine. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, how to configure an agent on a local machine and then point the Jenkins file to execute all the pipeline stages into that machine, uh, just go back to the playlist Jenkins in my YouTube videos uh, channel, and then you will find uh, a video which will talk about exactly this. Right, so I have an agent that, uh, I mean, I've uh, mentioned that this entire pipeline needs to run locally on this specific uh, machine. I've configured some environment variables and then followed by a lot of stages. Maybe one more additional point is, a couple of stages are all configured one after the other, but then there is one section here. You can see that I've named it as quality gate. Maybe I will rename it something like dev, okay, security scans and you can see i have given parallel and then defined few stages so what this means are 
how this basically affects is something that I will show later in the video. But just to note that a specific subset of the stages are executed parallel and uh, inside a major block, major stage called security scans, and then it has sub stages called sonar cube scan, dependency check scan, and then publish to dependency, dependency track. Uh, and then again, it comes back to getting executing the other stages one after the other. Right. Uh, that's pretty much it. I am not talking anything deep into the Jenkins file. Now, let me go ahead and commit. Now, as you always know, I for those who have been following our videos, we always configure um, the pipeline to be a continuous integration pipeline, which means instantaneously, the moment a code change is pushed into GitHub, there should be a pipeline getting triggered instantaneously without any manual intervention or without anybody going in and then manually uh, triggering a pipeline. There you go. Uh, we see that it's waiting to get picked up and yep, it has started. Now, let me run you through all of the different stages or the minimum basic stages that is required for a DevSecOps CI pipeline. You start with checking out the source code. You want the source code to be checked out to the local machine, which is uh, on this machine. Uh, and the first step is to build the application. This is a Node.js application, so we use uh, probably npm install to get the application built. Uh, and once the application is built, you will have a resultant artifact, basically. Uh, once the application is built, then you would want to immediately follow it with running a couple of unit tests. This is very important because you want to run few basic unit tests, uh, either using JUnit or Jacoco, to check if the built application looks clean. So once you have the unit tests getting passed, then comes the real deal because we are claiming it as a DevSecOps CI pipeline, security comes into the mix. Otherwise, we would have uh, just called it as a DevOps pipeline and straight away moved to containerizing the application. But nope, we need to go through the security scans. So you see next starts the security scans followed by a uh, couple of scans. First one is a sonar cube. Sonar cube, as you know, is the uh, um, code analysis tool. So we want to check if the source code is of good quality, complying to all of the proper syntax. Is it coded efficiently? Are there any hard-coded secrets and much more? So pure and out and out code quality related scan is what we do with Sonar Cube. Done. And then we check the dependency check. So dependency check is more like an SEA, software composition analysis. It basically scans your package.json and then checks if all of your third-party libraries that you use for the application build is clean or do they have vulnerabilities? So we have kind of covered uh, SAST, we have covered an SEA, and a dependency check uh, basically has a uh, report um, that gets generated out of the scan. And then immediately you can also publish it to dependency track where you get a visualization board to uh, track uh, and view uh, and then do a lot more things with the dependency uh, track. So that's what we do with the published dependency track. Now. With that, we kind of complete the first set of security scans. Okay, everything looks good. Then we go ahead with a built image. So we want to now containerize the application because now with the modern day and age, the number of projects that are getting built on-prem has minimized drastically. So I'm considering a case where we think that we have uh, uh, containers and then the cloud is in the mix. So let's containerize the application using uh, Docker. And then build image is basically you are building the Docker image. You will have a Docker file. I have a Docker file, uh, something like this. And then I'm basically containerizing the Docker file. Again, we're not getting into the details. So also for Sonar Cube, we need to have something like a Sonar Project Properties, and then that's configured using this file. Uh, maybe I can also show you localhost 9000. I can show you this. So we just had uh, the simple e-commerce application getting scanned. You can see here that three minutes ago there was a scan happening. And then there is some security hotspot that I could see on the overall code. So there are some three security hotspots. Good. So let me jump back to my stages. Uh, yeah, we are at this stage where we want to build the image using the Docker file, we use Docker environment and then build the Docker file. And once we have the image, we want to execute one more security tool, which is anchor scan, 
this anchor uh, uh, is another security scanner that basically targets your docker file and then docker images so again it is going to scan your docker file the docker image that built out of the docker file and then check if the base image that we used has vulnerabilities or this image that we created has any sort of vulnerabilities good if everything looks clean then we would want to push the image to registry basically we want to tag it and then push the image to registry what's the registry tool we have docker hub here as a registry tool uh it see it shows if i do a refresh we should see something pushed three four minutes ago yep so you see node.js e-commerce application was pushed three minutes ago as a part of this pipeline and then uh deploy image onto remote host basically it's um, uh, the cd part uh, but it's not going to do anything in here so with pushing the image to the docker hub our ci pipeline is tagging and then image pushing the uh, latest built image as, as a part of this pipeline into the registry uh, marks the end of a devsecops ci pipeline couple more additional uh, interesting things that i would like to say uh, the default stage view that jenkins provides you no matter how you configure is going to show you as a uh, waterfall uh, stage view it is going to show one stage after one stage irrespective of how you have configured but remember in our ci uh, jenkins file we have configured a couple of stages um, under a block called security scan which we did just before the start of uh, this pipeline if i would like to remind you back there is the stage called security scans and then follows uh, the three scans and then it again jumps out of the loop and then starts running the other stages how do we see that view because in today's day and age any other uh, ci tool like a gitlab ci or a uh, azure devops or bitbucket pipelines all have this feature where you can block uh, stages so you can basically have a build stage and then execute your build and application unit tests under this build stage you can have security scans and then execute all of the other three stages under this block so thus jenkins also have a good view like this yes it does provide you all you need to do is you need to install this plugin called open um, uh, blue ocean uh, how do you um, install an application uh, plugin uh, that is also covered in one of our previous videos it's very simple you just have to go to the uh, main dashboard manage jenkins there is this plugin section and then choose the available plugins uh, tab and then click uh, type blue ocean and then it you should uh, find one and then just go ahead and install it restart jenkins and then you will be able to see this blue open blue ocean uh, plugin installed and configured in here by itself if i click on this it then opens up uh, a view that i guess jenkins is going to then permanently move towards right now it's more of a plugin integration but i read somewhere that uh, jenkins is planning to make this as its default view in the near future so there you see so it's just uh, uh, landing you into a different ui setup where it uh, shows you your recently built uh, pipeline and then when you click on it there you go it gives you a very comprehensive look of what you have just done your application on which branch did you uh, run this from how long did it take for the pipeline to run when was it last executed and more importantly look here our stages are very neatly visualized and more so importantly the security scans block is the block and then under that you have sonar cube publish uh, dependency check and then publish uh, uh, to dependency track all blocked it here so this is what i mentioned about you can also have like a build block and then club the build applications and unit test together then you have the security scans then you can have all of the docker build stuff in a block then finally you can have the uh, push to registry block so you just have good blocks configured with each of the stages club under each of the block and more information just feel free to go ahead and then um, uh, uh, explore all of the other information that this uh, view provides you right uh, let me come back perfect uh, so that's pretty much it for this video now if you're wondering why i haven't jumped into each of the security scan tools in detail we saw um, sonar cube but we haven't seen uh, let's say a dependency check and how to publish it to dependency track or anchor cli uh, scan they are work in progress i'm currently configuring them and then setting them in, them in my local uh, the moment it's done i will have a dedicated video that will only talk about the different scan tools that i've configured in this devsecops ci uh, pipeline and then how do we configure and then uh, integrate them with the pipeline that's one video that's going to come up the other one is uh, the continuation of this one 
how should your CD pipeline look like? Now that the image is pushed into uh, the Docker registry, the next step is to trigger a CD pipeline. CD pipeline basically it will have it will pull the image and then it is going to deploy the image into a machine into an Kubernetes environment either using help or customize. And uh, then it is also going to run some of the security scans like uh, uh, once this is a web application, so we probably might have run a, a DAS scan, a dynamic security analysis scan, a print test scan, and much more. Uh, since we are also involved in Kubernetes manifest files, there could also be another scanner to scan the manifest files and much more. Uh, this tools that I've picked in here is not the uh, only tools that you need to go for. If you check the industry, there are loads of loads of tools. There is uh, Veracode, Black Deck, Snake, uh, much, much more. Uh, so this is just to give you an idea. The, all these tools are open source. You can play around with them and then understand how each of the tools work. And that is why I've incorporated them into this demonstration. I hope. Uh, you have uh, good takeaways from this video. If you really like the video, I would uh, request you to like, share, and subscribe. Do pass it on to your friends and do keep watching out for more videos from Let's DevOps. Until then, bye, take care, have a nice rest of the day. Bye.